we rushed out a dusty little port town, Maya Tortugas, in the middle of Baja, just as the sun was setting. It was the first time it was just the four main crew. We were super excited to go to this world-class surf spot, Scorpion Bay. There was a swell running, but at the same time we had to get south to Cabo to pick up Eric and Brian, our crewmates, to see if this crazy idea of a community sailing trip would even work. It was a tight schedule, and what we weren't anticipating was it was going to be the first time on route we would have a major boat breakdown. Dark, troubled night. Everything's alright. It was April 15, just two weeks after we left Santa Barbara, and four months of slaving at the boatyard. <laughs> and we were super pumped um, to get waves. And now 54 here in Baja. But the kids are hungry. Michael and I are gonna try to get dinner. I am Sabrina Ichiban Lite. I present a sushi a la bonito. It was less than 24 hours. We, we, yeah, we stayed in Bahia Tortuga less than 24 hours because we were on such a mission. We got there, and what time did that leave? Oh, like... We took a bus, I think, at 3 a.m. So we, me and Ryan rode into shore around 1.30 or 2. We got there at like 4 o'clock. Yeah, we were there. And now he was returning in the middle of the night to go find his motorcycle that was questionable whether the battery would start. To make it back home. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mission to get to the pier where we would walk into town with all of our bags and backpacks, go to the grocery store, and buy as much food as we could for the next two weeks. made it all the way down past this little horn in the Baja Peninsula, central Baja, and we were heading to, um, past Punta Briojos to San Juanico, which is Scorpion Bay. So we're inside of Turtle Bay, which is this little picturesque desert, really interesting little bay, super well protected as you can see, but we needed to get out before um, sunset so that we pick up the wind that's blowing offshore out there. Uh, before the landmass kind of could cool down the wind and we lose our wind for the night. And then a few of us got the pleasure of showering. <laughs> Not everybody. Until <laughs> until we set off. You feeling clean? What's that? You feeling clean? So fresh and so clean, clean. Some people shower in civilization. Life. Michael, how many hours we got till Scorpion Bay? Approximately 38. We can do like 170? I think so. Just feeling like we're getting into the groove of this, right? We had our schedule, um, we're probably a little overconfident at this point but we were just sailing off into the darkness and we felt really good about it. We had Bonito and that we had caught over the last few days. I'm not sure. Little kelpfish? I don't think it's kelpfish, it's moving. sushi and we were eating really well. eating really well. <laughs> yeah. um, so sail all night and arrive in Punta Briojos in the morning and Boy, windy. But we had to also stop for a couple hours in order to align with arriving in Scorpion Bay in the morning. Yeah. 
Ryan. Gale Force Productions. We can hear you. We're just demonstrating our dedication to our passions over here. Another picture perfect departure from Habero Hose. I just remember, you know, going downwind, I really love to sail just a reacher, just the head sail. There's no main mainsail, no boom, nothing to swing around that's dangerous. Just the big head sail and pulling us along at six, seven, sometimes eight knots. By then, because we're in that bite of the Baja Peninsula, there's a nice smooth water relatively. Um, and it just like felt so dreamy that night, I remember. Yeah. I had done the midnight shift with Ryan from like, let's say 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. or something. And, you know, maybe around 4 the engine had to come on because the wind stopped, so. I'm sleeping with the buzz of the nice engine. Nice and peaceful morning. When all of a sudden I hear the <laughs> engine stops, a little bit of rustling on the deck, and I climb up the aft cabin hatch to find out what's going on. At this point, we were just two miles away. We could see the waves out in the headlands. I was just having my cup of coffee, and I looked at the gauges on the engine, and the, the oil pressure was boom going down. I was like, what? I jump and shut off the engine, you know. Everything is just deathly quiet. Any, uh, words? Well, you know, constant battle against entropy continues at sea. Worst case scenario is going over my head, like there's a leak in the, in the engine and how is it lost pressure? This is the first time ever we really lost pressure in, the, in this engine. Things keep falling apart. Don't have quite enough time to fix whatever is already breaking and something new happens. But we keep going. <laughs> Uh, the whole schedule of the trip like started like dawning on me of you know are we gonna have to pull pull the engine out in Cabo or are we gonna have to do repairs and what, how is this gonna affect uh, in terms of the hurricane season and our goals? Autopiloto has been working though. No. Yeah. No, it stopped. It stopped it... working about twenty minutes into the station. Basically, as soon as we turned on the engine. Hmm. You know, I'm like pretty. Uh, how would you describe it? Distraught. Distraught <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Wiping up like oil sludge that's just like sloshing around in the bilge. Like, and found this little tube that was sending information to the oil gauge. It had chafed up against a little piece of metal and it had a pinhole that was leaking and that's what caused the problem. Oh, we were able to pack that up, use some rigging tape, seal that up and um, carry on. <laughs> and so as we got going again, we pulled in and there she was, you know, beautiful waves coming through and we just had two or three gorgeous days. And basically the ideal setup, right? Yeah. For a boat, offshore winds, good anchorage, swell. And for someone like me who is still learning how to surf, this place looked ideal. So I was in heaven when the swell was like the perfect size for me and no one was out, which is a great place to learn. No big deal, you know, fish is just surfing backwards here, filming Michael. <laughs> this is our version of a modern day drone. <laughs> This is one of the gifts of the wondrous universe that we're living in. Sometimes it feels like it's going against us, but today we know that she's smiling bright. We have Michael catch a wave. Forget this guy, Christian. 
Dark troubled night to wait for the light. So coming up next, on the way down to Cabo San Lucas, we stop at Punta Tosca and have an amazing wilderness adventure. You don't even believe we found treasure and the crew keeps harvesting stoke. Subscribe below, keep tuned in. Dark ends will carry on. You move like a broken song. It plays on and Skies, the siren sound, the newest strain of years is passed on by. Tornadoes come and the sirens yell, the fields they burn.